In today's video, we're going to be drawing an old school style clipper ship. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, like I said, we're going to be drawing an old school style clipper ship. We're going to be going through the full process from sketching, you know, building up a bit of a framework, putting in the detail, and then we're going to go ahead and transfer that to watercolor paper and get it ready for painting, and so we can complete the artwork. So let's jump straight into today's video by going to the overhead. Okay guys, welcome back to the table. So in today's video, like I said, we're going to be drawing a old school or traditional style clipper ship. This is a pretty popular design. A lot of people still get this tattooed and it's a very popular design for drawing and painting flash sheets. So I've gone ahead and taken an A3 uh, piece of sketch paper and I've just folded it in half to give us A4 size as we're going to be doing this on a piece of A4 watercolor paper. I've also got my mechanical pencil as usual, an eraser in case we need it, and I've also got a ruler. We are going to need a ruler for this design. You can probably freehand it, but it's just not going to be as accurate and neat. So to start this one off, we're going to do a curved line that comes up and sweeps down. So it's like a big long S curve, and this will sort of be the front uh, edge of our boat. From here we're going to draw a diagonal line that comes down and touches about the midpoint of this initial hump and from there we're going to have a line that curves down and around. Just like that. The outside section of this is going to come in a little bit and then drop down and join back into that center line that we just drew like this and that's going to give you the initial foundation point for the boat so with this diagonal line what we're going to do is drop it down a little bit like that at the front and then bring it back and slowly get wider curving past this corner and then dropping back down into the center line. Just like that. And then on this first line that we drew, we're gonna bring it out a little bit wider. And drop it down with the curve into the center line again. From about halfway on this line, we're gonna come out slightly to a little peak and then drop it back into the center line with a little curved line like that. Okay, so from here I want to bring this one out a little bit wider because I've just noticed it's not quite as wide as I'd like it to be. So we'll cut that back in and follow that curve back. And we're going to double up on that top line. So just coming back and doubling up on that top line. From here we're going to draw a line just underneath this. And that's also going to follow through the entire design. And just taper down a little bit towards the back. Not too much. Now inside these two lines is sort of like tracks. And we're going to do these little archways. Like this. Just little upside down U shapes. Little curves. Like that. And then we can double up on this line underneath it. This is going to give us a little bit of a design and a pattern on the sides of our boat. At the very front of the boat, on either side of this center, I'm just going to drop in two oval shapes, like this. At the very back of our boat here, just connect up the bottom of that line there, and then drop a curved line down like this. Don't worry too much about the bottom of the boat, this will be obscured by the water and the waves. 
Okay, so at this point, you're gonna to wanna to get your ruler out. We're gonna go ahead and drop in the lines uh, for the sails here. So the first line you drop in is gonna be probably an inch back from, or two of these little uh, decorative shapes back from our center there. And you're gonna bring this one up, straight up like that. This is gonna be the tallest one, and they're gonna drop back slightly from there. The next one, you're gonna drop down slightly and just come back another, you know, two inches or so. Drop a straight line in for that one. And then come back about equidistant and drop down a little bit more and drop in your last one there. Okay, from this point, you just want to double up on each of those lines. So just drawing another line right next to each one. Only a couple of millimeters apart. Okay, so from here, I wanna drop in the actual poles that the uh, sails will hang off. So I'm gonna come down probably about an inch and a half from the first pole here. And you put in a line just over an inch long, like this. And then you're gonna come down even further and you put in a line that's about two inches long maybe a bit longer than that and you always want these to be slightly longer on the right side than the left side because of the angle that we're seeing them on you come down a little bit more about equidistant to that and you drop in another slightly longer line and then we're going to put one more in, again about equal distance to this one. And it's going to be slightly longer than that one as well. To do the next set running down the middle here is quite easy. You basically copy your first set, but just drop them down a little bit. So this first one is going to be lower obviously than that one. So we just drop it down a little bit. This one here is going to be slightly lower. So we'll drop that down a little. Again, slightly lower on this one here. Okay, now at the start of this very front sail area, we're gonna bring a line from about midpoint of this front piece, the center piece here and it's gonna curve up and stop at the top of the second sail point here. Just like that. From there, it's gonna curve back, following the same shape and touching down at about this point. And then to join them, you're gonna bring a line up and drop it down. That's like a big curved line like that. To do the second one, you start at the same point you follow the same curvature coming down to touch the bottom of this mast. Bring a line up behind this area here and back down and then bring another small line up as though it were to join up behind this sail here. And the very last one, we're gonna drop down one section to here we're going to follow our curvature back like this, forward and up, following it through with your eye down and forward to this point here, and then bringing it up. Imagine it's coming through here and joins back up at the top. Okay, in terms of drawing in each individual sail, it's pretty straightforward. The way we're gonna do it is you're gonna drop in two curved lines that come down and touch here. So we're gonna go one, two. And it's important that these two curved lines are really similar. So if you notice here, this one dropped a little bit too early. You want it to come out more first and drop back. 
Now they look really similar and that's sort of the way you want them to be. And then you bring a curve that comes up and then drops back down to touch that point there. And that's gonna give you your sail. Now to complete this area, you double up on that top line, draw a little circle in on the end. On the other side, you double up on the line and round off the end. Just like that. When there's something obscuring one of your sails, this is how you do it. It's the exact same formula. You come down and you match this on the other side. I'm only gonna go halfway because this sail obscures the bottom half of my sail that I'm working on here. Again, we'd start here and do a curve that comes back, but it's being obscured, so we start, you can start there and sketch it in lightly and then add a little bit more pressure as you come back to give you that direction and flow. Now to top off your flagpoles, basically what you're gonna do is draw a little circle, add a little S curve, and another little S curve underneath it, or on top of it, sorry. And that will give you a little flag. And then from the top of this, you can bring down your ropes. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, coming from that top one. Now from the next one down in this gap, we're gonna go one, two on either side. The one below that, we're gonna go one, two, three. One, two, and three would be obscured. And below this, we would go one, two, three, four. The other side is obscured. And at the bottom, we go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And these are the ropes behind the sails. Okay, once you've gone ahead and done that, you can add your second row of sails. Now, of course, half of these are gonna be obscured by the front sails. So it's gonna be a little bit less work, a little bit less effort to get these ones in. I'll pop in my little circle. I'll put in a little S curve. And in this case, at the end of this S curve, I'll cut it flat. So like I said, at the end of this one, I'll actually cut it flat, bring it back around into a secondary curve like that. And that gives us another fold in a slightly bigger flag. A final row of sails, and in this case, I'm leaving the flag out on the last one. We're going to go to this last section down the bottom here, out here. We're gonna double up on this line. And then we're gonna do a couple of big curves. We're gonna go one, a little curve, two, and a smaller curve that touches the tip, three, like this. This is actually uh, one of the sails that's been folded up. I believe it's like a brake sail or something. I'm not 100% sure, but it's a, yeah, a sail that's basically been folded up and tied and ready to drop, I think, when the boat needs to slow down. So I've gone ahead and drawn that in there. And then just behind this, we're gonna drop in one, two, three, and four diagonal lines coming up like this. And to join each of them, we're gonna do something similar to a spiderweb pattern. We're just gonna do these little curved lines that come across like this. And again, this is like a piece of netting or rope. Okay, from here, our ship is looking pretty cool, except for the bottom here. So we need to go ahead and mask some of this area off with water. Now, the way we're gonna do this is by drawing in some waves. So the best way to do this is to draw in some layered waves. We're basically gonna come in with these shapes like this and then doubling up on some of those and cutting back. Coming in, doubling up on some areas and cutting back, and cutting back, just like that. And you can do this for all of the areas of wave that you wanna have in here. Oh, 
once you've dropped in your waves, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a circle here. And that's gonna be the placeholder for a trad style flower, which I've covered in many other videos. But to cover it really quickly, it's a big circle with a little circle inside it. We double up on that little circle to give us a ring in the center that we're going to black out. And then you basically go ahead and add five or six petals to the outside of this, depending on your desired shape. So I've just done these little love heart shaped petals and I'll add a line and a dot to the center of each of them just to stylize them a little bit. Okay, now to border this off, what we're gonna do is start in the middle of our flower and draw a curved line that comes up like this and another one that comes back and up like that. So forward and up and back and up. And that's gonna be the center line for some leaves or I guess we'll call it like a wreath. So you just go ahead and draw leaf shapes off either side of that line to give us a wreath that comes around the bottom and borders off the edge of that water and brings the whole design together a little bit more. Okay, very last thing we need to do before outlining this one is add some clouds. So these are gonna be very similar to the Japanese clouds that we do. A Little bit simpler, we're just gonna do these big curves. We'll do a bunch on the outside there like that and we'll do some coming down the back as well. We'll do a couple of smaller ones, a nice big one and a couple of smaller ones again. And then if you want to you can add a couple of little M shapes in there which are going to represent birds. Okay so we're going to go ahead now and transfer our image onto watercolor paper by doing the inking process. So I've got my light pad here. I've said this in many videos. If you don't have a light pad, you absolutely should get one. They've become very cheap. They used to be three or $400 uh, from the art store. You can get them on eBay for like $20, $30, $40 now. So they're relatively cheap and they make this process a lot easier. You don't need tracing paper anymore. You don't need graphite stencils, anything like that. You just need a light pad. If you don't have one, however, stick your iPhone uh, torch on put it underneath the table, glass tabletop, and trace through there. Or go ahead and stand up at a nice sunny window and tape your artwork to the window and trace it through there. Not a comfortable way of doing it, but it works. So the watercolor paper I've got here is Fabriano cold press watercolor paper. This one is 300 GSM and it is A4 in size to match our design. We're gonna go ahead and tape this on top of our design. Once your design is taped onto the back of your watercolor paper, you can go ahead and switch on your light pad, which will show your design through the watercolor paper. You can go ahead and ink your design. So I'm not gonna bore you with the entire inking process. You're just tracing over the top of what your sketch is. I'm gonna be using Artline uh, drawing system, fine liners, and a Stadler pigment liner. The Stadler is in 1.2 size. I'm gonna be using that for the main areas of the boat and I'll probably use it for some of these front sails. I'll be using a drawing system 0.8 to do some of the finer details, maybe some of the waves and the, the wreath of leaves at the bottom. And I've also got a 0.2 here that I'm only gonna be using for the ropes. So just to do those little fine intricate details, I'll be using the 0.2. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this one and I'll see you guys in the next part. All right, now as you can see, I've gone ahead and outlined our design and transferred it onto the watercolor paper and we're looking really good and ready to get going with some ink. So, as usual, I've got a glass of water for washing the brushes out and blending. I've got a six well palette and I've also got carbon black Liquitex acrylic ink. Oh, and of course, along with this, I've got my two brushes. This is my inking brush and my blending brush. Okay, we're gonna start this one off by doing all of the solid black sections. So the first part of that will be the inside of the flower here. Taking your black and painting the inside of the flower, the inner circle. This is solid black. From here, each of these little archways are gonna be done in solid black as well. 
So just painting all of those in. No blending or shading for these. Okay, once these have all been done solid black, we can go ahead and start our sort of blended shading. We're gonna start on the outside of the boat here, taking a little bit of our black and bringing it down across the front edge here, just like that. Then take your blending brush, a little bit of water, and just blend that through. From here, we're gonna take a little bit of black, come on the other side of that line, and do the same sort of thing. Just a little bit of black across there, and just gently blend it up. Just feathering that edge off, and blending out a little bit. From here, I'm gonna flip my page over just to make things a little easier. And we're gonna do a little bit of shading from the back of the boat here. It's a large area, so I am going to just pre-wet my page. Just like this. And we're gonna take some black, load your brush up nice and heavily. And come in from the back of the boat with your solid black. Just like that. Take your blending brush, feather the edge out, and then just blend it forward. Try and get a nice smooth gradient. From your black to a mid gray, to a light gray and into white. From here, I want to do a little bit of black from this top corner. So I just put in a little curved section of black there. With my blending brush, I just feather that out a little bit and blend it down. Following the same motion as the shape of the black that we put down. And I want to do a little bit of this on the other side. Just taking my black, doing a little curved section of the black there and then feathering that out and blending it smooth. You also want to put a little bit of black on the back section of this here. Take some water and just blend that down nice and gently into a white. And we're going to do a little bit of black from the very tip, not too much. Okay, from here we're going to add a bit of shading to those little archways. We've done them solid black and now they've been able to dry. They've had the right amount of time to dry. And now what we're going to do is bring a little bit of black across the bottom of them. Just straight across the bottom. Go about halfway. Take some water. Feather that and just blend it up about halfway. You don't have to worry about those arches getting too smudged because the black has dried and that's the benefit of working with the liquid acrylics is you can allow them to dry and then you can work over the top of them with other colors or the same color. Okay, we're going to shade off the front edge of these uh, the sails at the front of our boat here. So we're going to bring a little bit of black up that front edge, not too much. A little bit of water and just feather that edge out nicely, blending it through. Okay, now how are we going to shade our sails? Each of them is going to be shaded in the exact same manner, so I'm going to show you how to do one of them. Basically, we're going to turn our page. This is because I'm right-handed. Of course, if you're left-handed, you'll turn it the other way. We're going to take a little bit of black and we're going to follow the curvature that we have at the bottom of the sail. Follow that curvature around. Take your water brush or your blending brush. Feather that out nicely. And just blend off that gray edge a little bit. So we'll do that little bit of black at the bottom of each sail. And we're gonna turn the page one more time so that I'm on the right side of this edge. Take a little bit of black again. Follow the curve to the left side of this sail. 
feather that out slightly and then again just go in and blend out that gray edge now each of your sails is going to be shaded in the exact same fashion so i'm going to go ahead and skip through to the next part of the black shading okay to shade our waves we're going to go into each section and shade back now once again this is going to be easier if i rotate my page all the way around so that I'm on this side and I'm blending towards myself as opposed to trying to blend away from myself. And we're gonna go ahead and take a little bit of black, run it along the top edge of the inner shape on the wave here, like this. Feather it out and blend it back. We'll do that across the top edge of each of these little sections on the inside of our wave shapes. Okay, once you've shaded your uh, waves in this manner, you can go ahead and shade your leaves as well. We'll do a bit of black shading on those. So we've done these before. You're basically going to do the bottom edge like that. Of course, Feather that out and just blend it forward a little bit. And you're going to go along and do that for all of the leaves. Coming across the bottom edge with black and then blending it forward. Only gently. Alright, once all of your black shading is complete, we can go ahead and jump into colour. We're going to go ahead and take our transparent roll Erba. Again, this is from Liquitex Acrylic Ink Range. This is like a brown color, a transparent brown color. So you do need to lay it on a little heavier than some of your other colors. Of course, you can add a drop of something else to it to give it a little bit more volume and depth. Um, and that way it lays on a little bit thicker. Okay, you're going to start off with this color and paint in each of these sort of pole areas. We're just painting all of those in solid with this brown sort of tone. And you're going to do that for all of the sail, all the masts here, all the sail posts. You're going to do all of them brown, including the little ends at the ends of the sails. You don't want to forget those either. They're sticking out from either side of the sails. So you want to make sure to add a little bit of color to those as well. We're also going to be using that brown color to paint the bottom of the ship here, the main sort of section of the ship, the body of it. You can go ahead and just paint in solid brown for this bottom section. And I might layer that up a bit to make it a bit richer. And then coming up from there, I'm going to take my blending brush and blend that out into our white. And we'll come back down from that corner with a little bit of our brown again. And just blend that through as well. Again, coming down from the top on the other side, like this. Putting in a bit of brown. And blending it back with some water. And then from here, I'll turn my page around so that I've got a better angle. Load my brush up with that black. Sorry, with that brown coming in on top of my black and just coming forward like this. Reaching into that front portion of the boat, taking our blending brush and just blending that forward. Okay, last bit we're gonna use this brown color for is this bit at the front. So we're gonna bring our brown from the tip down towards the boat. A bit of water to blend that through. Leaving it a little bit lighter. I'll flip the page again to get a better angle. Come in from that little corner there with our brown and blend that forward. 
and I'll come in from that dark spot we did with the black on the opposite side bringing brown from top down and then blending it down and through okay our next color is going to be our yellow orange again this is the liquid acrylic range this is a yellow orange it has a nice vibrant tone to it and we're going to go ahead and use that to paint in these two sort of lips that we have on here we're going to come in from the front of them reaching our highlight point and blending them to white and the top one as well blending to white and then we're going to turn our page around come from the back of the boat forward and blend to white again from the back of the boat forward and blend to white and this is going to give us a nice streak highlight through the center of our yellow and for these two points in the middle we're going to do those yellow as well I'll do yellow about halfway down and then blend in a little highlight coming towards that bottom point so to do our flower we're basically going to start in the center with solid yellow and do a nice ring all the way around like this and take our water brush and go around that ring just blending our yellow out to white okay once you've got all of your yellow in there we're going to be jumping into blue this is uh, phthalo blue from the Liquitex acrylic range. Just drop a little bit into there. We're only using this for a couple of bits. We're gonna use it for the water and then we're gonna repurpose it for the clouds as well. Once I'm here, basically what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of that blue, bring it straight over the top of our black and then with our blending brush, just blending that blue down into the bottom of that shape there so again a little bit of blue over the top of our black and gray area like that and then with our blending brush we're just going to bring that pigment down over the top of our gray and onto our white okay once you've colored in your waves you're going to take a bit of water and dilute your blue and you want it really really light so we've diluted it all the way down And you're basically just going to use your blending brush for this part and we're going to go ahead and paint the clouds the way that you're going to do each cloud is take a bit of your light blue that we just made come across the top edge leaving a little bit of white and then just blending down into nothing bringing blue across that top edge and then blending it down into white. And you're gonna do this for each section of your clouds. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and take some sap green. This is again from the Liquitex acrylic ink range. We'll drop some in our palette and we're gonna use that to color our leaves. So we have done leaves in this fashion before. You're basically taking your green coming in over the top of your black and your gray and then blending forward to white with a little bit of your water there I like to leave a little white lip across the edge and you're basically just going to go along and do this for all of your leaves making up the little wreath border that we've got I think it looks really nice nice way to break things up and to border off that water. Okay, there's one thing left to do really, and that is to use our Pyrol Red, again from our Liquitex range here. And we've got a couple of little bits of red that we're gonna do. So for starters, we're gonna paint our flags in red. The way that we're gonna do this is coming from the wider point on our flag forward, like 
this. And then with our blending brush, just bringing that red through to white. Coming over to our next flag, doing the same thing on this first section. Solid red. And blending forward to that corner. And then the next section along, solid red and blending forward to the tip. That little tiny loop at the back is solid red as well. Okay, the next bit of red we're gonna do is to create a little bit of background. We're gonna come from either side of our boat with a bit of a red glow. Just laying down a little bit of water to start with, pre-moisten that page. I'm gonna take a little bit of our pyrrole red come out from that corner there and then take our water brush and just feather that out gently blending that sort of pinkish hue out to white and we're going to come across and do the same thing on this side by flipping the page pre-moistening it Filling in that little area with our red. And then blending that out. And now we're gonna do this exact same little red glow behind our clouds by coming into the sections between each cloud with a little bit of red and then blending it out using some water so just come in between each section of the cloud and then gently blending it out to white and this will give us that little red glow that is so common with these old school and traditional designs it really makes them pop and stand out and it just gives the artwork a little bit of a background Okay guys, and with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and sign it. Don't forget to sign your artwork. And that is how you draw a traditional style tattoo theme clipper ship. Just like that. That is it guys. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you'd like to see in the next or future videos. I'm always open to new ideas and suggestions. Whether you want more tutorials, long form tutorials or more art challenges and reviews, things like that, just leave a comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to head over to Facebook at Dagger Designs. My online portfolio is over there so you can see all of my artwork. Not only this, but you can feel free to message me on Facebook, send me a DM. Uh, I can review your artwork and give you some feedback if you'd like, or just drop by to say hello. It's great to hear from you. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss videos when they come out. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next video. Keep up the drawing. Bye.